everyone a really warm welcome back to the channel i thought i'd do a quick video today to talk about this stuff um this is kedar beading kedar beading yeah i think that's how you pronounce it and uh, this is the stuff that you attach awnings to your caravan or your motorhome or indeed your camper van and uh, it's really simple to buy this stuff and make super funky super simple sunshades so i thought it might be helpful if i showed you how it works and uh, then your imagination can run wild and you can make whatever sort of simple sunshade you want so this is the beading itself um, i'll give you a close-up in this camera so this is you get a a plastic sort of uh, circular core there and then this plasticized fabric over the top so this is a double flap kedar beading so called because it has double flap look at that that's what it says on the tin doesn't it and this stuff comes in black or i was going to say white this is, this was white once upon a time um, obviously this is a used piece that i've taken off of something else to put it on something else hence the uh, stitch marks on it and the slightly yucky looking outside uh, I'll pull all the spare threads out and put it through the wash before I use it again so this stuff is really simple to use it's measured by the diameter of this piece here so the plastic bit at the top here and uh, the stuff you want for most caravan and motor morning rails is either six millimeters or seven millimeters I think I tend to order mine at six millimeters um, some awning manufacturers say they supply at seven millimeters I don't think it makes a massive difference um, might be better off if you've got a very open awning rail with seven and a very closed one having six and then it'll slide a bit more easily so you'll know your awning rail better than I will. So this stuff comes in black or white uh, as I said it's double flap and it's very simple to use all you do is get whatever bit of fabric you're using for your sunshade put it between the flaps here and I'll insert some footage of things I've made so you can see how I've done it on a big scale. So insert your fabric into the flap. If I can do it while I'm holding it up midair. Put the flap back down over the top. Obviously make sure everything is completely square. And then just stitch over the top. So stitch fairly far down on this side so you make sure you catch all your layers of, of fabric and beading and so on that you want to catch in there and just stitch straight over the top and hey presto you'll be joined together um i imagine manufacturers sort of plastic weld this stuff so you know it goes in there and they sort of zap it and then you don't see stitch marks on it but it's fairly easy to stitch it's not particularly thick at all you probably want a reasonably heavy duty domestic needle so something like a size 16 something like that something that's designed for heavy duty materials or jeans or something like that but um, I've never had any problems putting it through any of my machines, either the, the lightweight uh, white one that, that was the first machine I had, or these days I've got a very heavy duty one, but I didn't have any problems with the, the normal domestic machine. That was fine. And that is simple to use like that. Um, so that's how I've done the simple beige sunshade that you've probably seen come out in a video already. But I have used it just by simply taking an existing tarp and the tarp I had had this fantastic orange sort of marking across the top there and I didn't want to lose that so I simply just put it on the top there and stitch through both layers rather than enveloping it in the double flaps um, and as long you just have to be careful that your any tarp here is not very close to the beading bit here otherwise it can get stuck as you're dragging it through so just make sure it's set down a bit and you keep everything nice and straight and you'll be fine so that is it if you want to make this stuff into a sunshade it is really really simple so if you find a wonderful piece of fabric that you love try and get a fairly heavy weight one um, a fairly heavy cottony one and then when the wind picks up a bit it won't flap around and sort of rustle noisily it'll be much nicer under there and if it's cottony it'll breathe nicely as well so it won't feel quite so humid if you're uh, pitched on grass i guess possibly slightly damp grass on a hot day it gets quite humid under a sunshade if the vapor can't escape through the top anyway make yourself a very simple rectangle then you'll need to put some eyelets in try and get non-rusting ones probably three so one at each end and one in the middle and then you'll need three poles with spikes on i've put some links below to those sort of things that might come in handy um so make your shape and then just attach your beading like i said at the back so with your fabric in the center Make sure everything's square so it's all going to be nice and straight and then stitch it together. I usually put two lines of stitching in just to make sure it is nice and strong and holds everything together. 
so there we go. In terms of uh, using it, you know, put your fabric in the center there, as I said, pin it down, or, you know, if you can cope with it, put your fabric in as you go and stitch along. Because of course, every time you put a pin in something supposed to be waterproof, then potentially it starts leaking. So you need to be mindful of that. The other thing I found is sometimes with these fabrics, especially if you've got waterproof fabrics, they're very shiny and they will tend to slip, especially as the inside of this is plasticized. You see the shininess on there? So if that starts to happen, um, either you can use a few spots of uh, fabric glue to hold it in place. Or oh, one thing I really, really like that I've come to use a lot is Sailmaker's tape. And that's a double-sided tape that you um, simply stick your fabric in place and then stitch over the top to hold it. One top tip for using that, if you can, try and put the Sailmaker's tape away from your stitch line. So if your stitch line is going very close to the edge here. Try and get the Sailmaker's tape in a bit if you can, because every time your needle goes through, it will pick up some of that adhesive off of the tape and it'll get all gummy. Uh, and gradually it'll just build up and build up and it'll break your thread and not leave very nice stitch lines. You can get around that by spraying, as you go, just a little bit every so often uh, with a spray containing silicon and you can buy some sewing sprays like that. But I have actually been using Isabella Isotex spray, uh, which is a um, an awning proofer um, because I happen to have loads of it left over from when I was doing a bit of maintenance on the top of our folding camper uh, but that contains silicon in it as well so I've just been using that and that keeps my needle clean as I go. So that's a load of top tips. Um, I hope you found it useful. Thanks for tuning in. You know do the comments, do the uh, thumbs up thing and I would absolutely love to see your wonderful creations. I look forward to these wonderful uh, bright or geometric or funky or something sunshades uh, on campsites everywhere this year so tag me in in any twitter or any instagram post because i would love to see your photos anyway that's it for today thanks for tuning in and i guess i'll catch you in the next one so bye for now see ya here's a project that's coming up but uh, has some very funky fabric in.